ever have doubts about your abilities or skills, even in areas where you typically excel? Do you ever feel inadequate, fake, or even as a fraud, even though there's massive evidence to the contrary? Do you ever feel undeserving of your success, your title, position, prestige, or even wealth? Some would label this condition as the imposter's syndrome. I label it the human condition. And it is most especially prominent in high achievers. That means people like you and me. In spending time interviewing almost every legendary achiever that you can think of, this is always something that I ask them about. And after hundreds and hundreds of discussions, only two people didn't admit to feelings of self-doubt or inadequacy associated with imposter syndrome. And those two are clinical megalomaniacs, void of any self-awareness. So the first thing that I want to assure you of is this, feelings associated with imposter syndrome make you, well, normal. A normal human meat sack, fighting gravity every day as you walk atop, atop this spinning orb hurling through space and time. So relax, you're all good. Now, what do you do about it? Today, I will teach you what celebrity and Olympic level performance coaches teach their clients on six-figure retainers, what I have taught many times to prominent CEOs and extreme achiev achievers on six-figure retainers, but you're gonna get right now, right here, gratis. Nice, right? We're gonna use Queen B or Queen Bay herself as the example. Here's how Beyonce crushes her imposter syndrome and now how you can too. Yes, even the greatest Grammy winning recording artist of all time struggles with imposter syndrome and is terrified to take the stage each time. That is until, until she does what I will teach you right here. The technique is called character invention. The technique is inventing a character who can easily do what feels scary. Then the character is the one who can perform way outside the comfort zone of the mere mortal. Here's a breakdown and how you can use it. One, invent a character. Two, identify a trigger to switch yourself into that character. Number three, take on the mentality and physicality of that character. And then four, do the reps. My dad taught me this technique when I first started playing football, particularly when he saw me playing afraid and timid. He said, as soon as you put that bucket on your head, the helmet, and you hear the snap of the chin strap, that's your switch. Instantly, you become something different, he said. You go from David Banner to the Incredible Hulk, which was a popular TV show with Lou Ferrigno, which my dad and I used to watch together when I was a kid. He said, you go from a weak, timid, normal person to a monstrous, terrifyingly strong, vicious killer. It instantly changes how you play football. And it instantly did. I no longer needed to overcome my fear or my timidity, I just needed to flip the switch to become someone different. Now, I know that that sounds the same, but the emotional, mental, and psychological, thus physical shift that it causes and the performance outcome is radically different. Beyonce created a character called Sasha Fierce. She invented her completely out of thin air. Sasha is Beyonce's stage persona. Beyonce, the everyday human, is timid, reserved, and nervous. Sasha Fierce is brave, audacious, and a fearless performer. Sasha can do the pop star stuff on stage that Beyonce Knowles knows would be way too embarrassing to do. Here is Beyonce describing her character invention to Oprah Winfrey back in 2008. Wow. You really are Sasha Fierce. I just thought the whole, <laughs> the, 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 can you put the CD cover up there? I thought the whole way you did that was so fantastic. So you are Sasha Fierce. Yes, this side of the album is I Am. Yes. And people I think are a little more familiar with, with my stage persona when they see Crazy in Love videos and they yes. see videos like um, Put a Ring on It. Sasha Fierce for the fans. Sasha Fierce. Sasha Fierce. So, like when you're getting ready to go on stage and perform, does Sasha Fierce, when does she show up? Usually when I hear the crowd, when I yeah. put on my stilettos, um, when, like the, the moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over for you, uh -huh. then Sasha Fierce appears and my posture and, and the way I speak and everything is different. 
Oh, Sasha's coming out. No, no, she's not. <laughs> she doesn't do interviews. She, she only performs. Oh, she doesn't do interviews. No, no, no. No, we leave her home for that. Yes. But no, is it like a process that happens too? Like you were talking about the high heels, like once the lashes go on and the Absolutely. makeup and all that stuff. It's kind of like when I do a movie, becoming the character. Once you put on the wig and once yeah. you put on the clothes, you walk different. Yeah. It's, it's kind of this character that I've, I've created over the years. Uh-huh. Yeah. And how is Sasha Fierce different than I am? Well, I know, you know, definitely wearing that bodysuit, I can never walk out here and do yes. that. If I'm on the stage and I'm performing, I would. But, you know, when I'm speaking and I'm, I'm myself, I, I wouldn't, I would feel a little ridiculous. Uh -huh. um, so that is how you go from being a normal human being, subjected to all the normal human conditions, to a superstar performer who can do superhuman things. It's fantastic, right? I think it's healthy for a person to be nervous. It means that you care, that you work hard and want to give a great performance. You just have to channel that nervous energy into the show, said Beyonce. I use this character identity to shift into this, to this very day. My character identity, I call Showtime. It is modeled after Elvis, his on and off stage persona, not his fashion. You won't see me in a rhinestone studded onesie anytime soon. Although I do feel like I could rock that leather jumpsuit from his 1968 comeback special. It is well known that Elvis was an introvert off stage. He struggled with shyness all his life and he suffered from massive stage fright his entire career. But Elvis created a trigger, one that transformed him from Elvis Aaron Presley from Tupelo, Mississippi into the king the king of rock and roll. Elvis would crush the stage with his wild and provocative performances, martial art kicks and all, then exit stage left and Elvis would revert right back into the shy loner that kids used to bully and call a mama's boy. My trigger to go from my RBF, leave me the hell alone, introverted self, into character is to audibly say out loud, it's showtime. Whenever my last place of privacy is, whether it's backstage or before I leave my hotel room or before I get out of my car in the parking lot, I say to myself, Showtime. And instantly, the extroverted, gregarious, and outwardly warm and friendly Showtime character emerges. So here is the character identity building framework. Number one, create the character. Answer these questions to develop the persona of your character identity. How does this character perform? Describe a half dozen character attributes. What does this character do when it feels insecure, insecurity, fear, or nervousness? This is how Beyonce developed Sasha Fierce. She made up her name and her character attributes and decided her emotional responses in advance. To help you bring the details of your character to life, you can also borrow from fiction, history, or personal heroes to build your character identity. Number two, identify the trigger. Identify the action or moments that initiate you to step into character. For Beyonce, this is when she puts on her stilettos before going on stage. Find a physical action that launches you into character. Number three, develop the physicality. Explore how the character feels in your body. If you're in your head, you're dead. Your character is connected to your body. Sasha Fierce has a specific posture, a walk, and even the way she holds her body in space. Explore the postures and physical movements of your character. Number four, do the reps. You can walk into your gym, your church, or happy hour as your character. You can go to the post office, order your coffee at Starbucks as your character. Nobody needs to know. It's good to practice accessing your character identity as often as possible, starting in low stake environments. Repetition is the mother of skill. The more reps you can do will help your character be available when you need it. Oh, and Oprah asked Beyonce if she ever brings Sasha Fierce home for Jay-Z. Here's how she answered. She, she, Does Sasha Fierce ever go home? Like, um, sometimes, but I... <laughs> <laughs> Not often, only, only on um, special she, occasions. She ever show up in... <laughs> Yeah. Shows up sometimes in the house. Yes. Yeah. But definitely when I'm nervous or or um, whenever I have to perform, whenever I have to do choreography or something that's difficult, and I, it's no different from anyone else. I feel like we all kind of have that that thing yeah. that takes over when it's. So do you? Yeah. And don't even ask. The answer is yes. On very special occasion, my wife does get a personal visit from Elvis, and yes, she gets all shook up. All right, Darren Daly friends, 
What did you learn here today? What struck you the most? Do you have a character identity? Is there one that you think you might try on? Share that with us. Share your thoughts, your feelings, reactions, and declarations in the comments below.